Hi, I'm Facundo Lugones, and you're listening to the Functional Tennis Podcast. Hi, welcome to the Functional Tennis Podcast, the video version. Today, I speak to Facundo Lugones, the coach of Cam Norrie. They've been working since 2017 together since Cam left university in Texas. And also, Facundo was at the same university just a few years ahead. He tells us all about his journey, his from playing to coaching and he tells us plenty of tips for players out there if you do enjoy it please share it with all your fellow tennis enthusiasts and also if you enjoy chats with ATP or WTA coaches please head over to functionaltennis.com forward slash podcast where you'll find other chats we've had some with some great ATP and WTA tour coaches the shout out to our podcast sponsor Slinger who make this podcast possible and if you've any interest in the Slinger bag or any interest in making your tennis better when you can't find a partner uh, head over to slingerbag.com all the info is there and if you have any burning questions about it you can let me know because I'm an avid Slinger bag user finally if you do enjoy it please leave the thumbs up okay let's jump into this episode Hi Facundo, welcome to the Function Tennis Podcast, how are you? All good, all good, thanks for having me, how are you? Oh, it's awesome to have you on. Now you've had a, a busy few weeks, which we'll talk about in a while, but right now, where are you? I'm home in Barcelona, uh, yeah, after a long four weeks in, in the UK, uh, um, I got some time off, but uh, yeah, really, really happy with the way things went. Yeah, I can't wait to hear about that whole, the past few weeks, obviously the past few years, because uh Cam's rise has been pretty epic, like to get where he is. And first of all, are you for, you're from Argentina? Yeah, I'm from Argentina, but uh, yeah, I went to college a couple of years ago, and then I kind of moved to Europe. So it's yeah, I left Argentina ten years ago. Okay, and so ten years was when you would have started college. Exactly, yeah. And you were good. You were good junior, like top five, top six uh, in Argentina. Uh, well, my age in Argentina, it was they were pretty good players. Uh, the top five guys were like top ten ITF, and then behind those guys, you had Schwarzman and Kicker and Mena, who are now well, obviously the first two you know them, and Mena's like one twenty, one thirty. So it was a pretty good age group, and I was I was probably like nine or ten on that on that on that age. Okay, and specifically from your age group, do we know anybody? Anybody still on? Yeah, Diego Schwartzman, Nicolas Kicker, oh, your... uh, Facundo Mena, Renzo Olivo, who always, always uh, also was top hundred. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of good players. Uh, actually, the best of of them when we were young didn't make it to top hundred, and the kind of the second group, some of them made it. So it's pretty interesting. It always happens, doesn't it? Some of the top juniors don't make it. Renzo, though, is a great guy. My first trip to Wimbledon with Functional Tennis a few years ago, I was with him, and just as he think broke top 100, and then it sort of spiralled the other way for him, but he seems to be back now. Back yeah, now. yeah, he's right on track again, playing really well. Great. So you did, uh, so you earned Argentina, and then you went to Texas Christian University. You got a good scholarship there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, David Roditi, the coach at the time and still today, recruited me. And yeah, I went there. The program wasn't very good. When I got there the first two, three years, they were just rebuilding it. And then obviously when Cam and other players, Guillermo Nunez and Rybakov came, then they became a top program. And it's been top 10 for the last seven years, I would say, something like that. Wow. And so you were there a few years before Cam arrived? Yeah. Yeah, I was there three years before Cam got there. So my last year was Cam's first year. And what was the impression of Cam when he arrived? He was uh, just a r normal guy, really nice to everyone, very social, and but extremely competitive, like next level competitive at everything, not just tennis. He wanted to, needed to be competing all day at everything, different games and whatever it is. And he's like that or even more today. So yeah, that was the, the main thing, just super competitive. And would you have ever thought back then he get to where he is right now looking at his game it's just so hard to predict that but when you obviously at the time when you when i just met him you don't know that he's that competitive on that mentally tough and and that smart and everything so it's, it's tough to make a call like that but when he was after his first year you, you you knew he had a chance of being a really good tennis player top 100 and then from there you don't know how how well it can go to say he would have been top 10, maybe it was too much. Uh, no, I never I never thought he was going to be top 10 when I first met him. Then after the years went on, yeah, why not? But at the time, no. 
and so you you did a year with him and what did you decide to do then after you finished in texas well yeah so i finished tennis and i still had to finish my degree so i had another year left in school but i couldn't play anymore on the team so they basically asked me since i had a big scholarship to help the team help the coaches so i did one year as a volunteer coach then i finished my degree and then i stayed another year around the area working in tennis and helping the team kind of part-time and yeah when i was going back to argentina cam was turning pro and he offered me to start traveling with him for the summer first and then we, we stayed together till today well uh yeah so you just you guys got on well you're quite young for a male coach yeah yeah we, we always had a great relationship we were really really good friends when we were playing and then yeah, when he started on tour, I felt like he needed someone that knew him very well, but also he could spend a lot of time together. And the traveling at, at that level is, is is not easy. You know, you have to go to a lot of different places. It's not like you can come back home all the time. And it was going to be a, a tough couple of months for him. And I, yeah, he needed someone that he could trust and someone that he could get along great. So the transition to uh, living an unreal life in college to like the grind of the challengers and all that, uh, make that transition a little bit easier for him, and luckily he was he was super quick. He went through the challengers in like six months, so it was wow. it was good. But uh, and did you ever decide? Did you ever think about going pro yourself, giving it a go? No, when I, when I was young, I, I thought about it. I didn't really have a clue what what that actually meant. But uh, as soon as I realized that my level wasn't wasn't that great my, my physicality my body wouldn't like really handle playing a lot of weeks in a row i would get hurt a lot but mainly my, my level my level wasn't there and uh yeah i just went to college and i realized okay if i'm not dominating college tennis i'm, I'm not gonna have a shot at professional tennis so i knew early on that i wasn't gonna be a pro tennis player and has there been any college lads who've actually surprised on the tour by not being successful in college but doing well on the tour yeah tour yeah right? um Dominic Koffer and uh, Maxine Cressy, both of them. I was in college at the same time as Koffer, and yeah, he was good. Obviously, among the top twenty, but he was never someone that I thought he's going to be unbelievable. And he's having a wonderful career. And same with Cressy. I think Cressy barely made the lineup at UCLA, and then now he's a top fifty player, and he's going to keep going up. So yeah, those two guys really impressed me. You definitely don't see Cressy on a fast court on your draw in your. Yeah, team. yeah, you don't want to see that guy on fast courts. That's for sure. So you, so you start working with Cam. What? Where did you pick up your coaching tips from? You, obviously, you learned on the fly. Yeah, I, I guess I always had really good coaches my whole life. So I was that shows you I was not a great tennis player. But uh, my coach, my uncle, played tennis. He was top fifty, and he coached me when I was young. And he teaches tennis really well. My, my parents were tennis coaches, and then. Before going to college, I was in a really good academy in Argentina where both coaches were on the tour with top players. And they, Mariana Wanachesi and Mariana Hood, and they taught me a lot. And then at TCU with Rodidi and Devin Bowen, also great coaches. So I've always been around really, really good coaches. And I always, I always like that side of it. And I always look up to my coaches as role models or people that were really important in my life. So I always look up to people that coach. But, uh, and then I kind of started trying to learn I enjoyed it and it kind of became my passion but it's not something that when I was young I was thinking I was going to be a coach it's something that kind of happened I think most tennis players when they're young think I'm never going to be a coach I'm never going to be I so, so how's the journey been so you've been with Cam five years on the road now and what's been the secret to your success obviously long-term relationships are always great to see when you see a player and a coach and a fitness trainer and having a team like that What's been the secret to your, first of all, so long-term relationship and two, success? I think for long-term relationship with him, a uh, lot of good communication, a lot of respect to each other, always knowing uh, our goals and try to push each other to, to get there. And I think we also, we, we build a really good team together. We, we pick the right people to join the team, like Julian, the, the physio, and Bacek, the fitness trainer. Then also, uh, we had great people kind of helping us, Devin Bowen and James Rodman from the LTA, kind of guiding us and always, and also enjoying it, you know, and, and making sacrifices uh, on each side to, to the greater good of his career and obviously my career. But uh, 
yeah, kind of leaving everything else aside and just going all in, but also kind of enjoying that that journey and with a lot of respect and a lot of fun and a lot of uh, professionalism as well. So I feel like that was, was all those are uh, really important to keep a good long term relationship and also be successful. And then also, as for, oh, sorry, before I jump into Cam, like you talk about sacrifice, we always hear about sacrifice for players and they have to be fully committed. And I think you mentioned somewhere that that's where Sutton changed for Cam, where he became more fully committed. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, he's been making sacrifices since he was 16 when he moved from New Zealand to the UK and then went to college. And then, you know, he always been making uh, really good decisions to make it on tennis. With, and then a lot of them, have a price you know not seeing your family living away from home i took him to argentina once for like five weeks to train and at the time was the best for him but obviously it's not easy for him to say okay let's go there he was so uncomfortable and then look this precision we have to make it in spain because we, there's really good players there and we need to get better and always started making decisions just for his tennis you know not not for his own comfort or for his own happiness so i think when that started changing and he realized to to go to the top or uh, to keep getting better. There was no uh, balance on his life and he needed to do more and just put tennis as a priority. And I think he always did that in his life, but the last two, three years was to another level, like really, really making all decisions based on his tennis. So yeah, I think that's one of the keys why he started going up. I'm, I think a lot of players, and you probably see this a lot more than me, forget that it has to be your life, it has to be your more than your nine to five. You've got to show up every day. There's too many, I don't know what the word is, too many people think it's a bit of a vacation and then they wonder why they don't make it. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's way more than nine to five. It's just, it's just all day, every day. Come, I, don't, I think he's taking now his first holiday in probably two years and it's like a four day holiday. So it's like, uh, that's kind of the, the, the price you, you, you pay for to do well or to at least try to be better or see how far you can go. It doesn't mean you're going to get results, but at least you, you put in everything on the table and just going for it. And yeah, one of the things is you just have to live for tennis and do it all day, every day. And what about, I so we, we jumped in the camp, but sacrifices, we talk about all the players, but as a coach, like you make for you to invest, you're invested in Cam, you're investing your time, your energy, and you're putting a lot of things yeah in. it's it's yeah it's it's pretty similar you know you kind of put everything else aside you, you never get to go home and you see your family once a year especially because they live in argentina for european players maybe it's, it's easier but for south all the south american players go through the same you know they have to lose three four month trip and there's no going home after you lose it's just you have to stay on the road and the you, 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 you kind of get get more tired than, than other players quicker but it's it's the way it is and you have to you have to make the sacrifices and see to see how far you can go but uh, yeah you just uh, but at the end of the day it's your own decision no one's forcing you to do it but if if you want to do well you just kind of gonna have to be really invested and and yeah you're gonna have to miss a lot of things just to to be able to to do what's best for your, for your tennis or your career but i think that's with a lot of jobs if you want to do really well you're gonna have to pass on a lot of things that uh, normal people do. True. No matter, you're right. No matter what you do, there's sacrifice if you want to be successful. And you got to say no to the things you may exactly. want to do. What do, you, what do you miss most from back home in Argentina? I know you've been away for yeah. 10 years, but what's the one thing that you wish? Uh, it's just playing football with my friends just on the weekends. Uh, have that play with, on, with my friend's team and go to dinner with them or seeing my family more often. But um, yeah, it's like I said, I, I'm I'm choosing this. It's not that I'm forced to do it. So uh, I also have, uh, I I also really enjoy what I do. So it's not like I'm complaining. But yeah, if I could play football more often with my friends, it would be it would be great. Great. And and uh, do you see yourself like long term? I don't know, many years away, moving back to Argentina, or would you base yourself in? Oh, uh, well, let's no, say. I, 50 I would, I would love to move back uh, at some point and maybe even coach there. Or, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not thinking too far ahead. But uh, yeah, I'm op I'm open to to moving back. I, I would love to spend more time there for sure. And apart from the challenge, sorry, apart from missing home, what are challenges are there for 
coaches, top coaches like yourself working with players? Well, yeah, it's also when, if you work with top, usually top players, they're very demanding and they want you there almost all the time and traveling. If you don't live in the same place as the players, it's become tough to have like a normal life outside of tennis. But, uh, but like, like I said before, it's, it comes with a job or you, or you either move where the player lives and to have more normal life and don't travel so much. But yeah, I would say the 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 availability and like having a normal life outside of tennis, it's that's the, the toughest challenge. But I'm sure most coaches they love what they do and that's why they do it. Otherwise, it could be teaching tennis in in a country club in their city and not travel and just have a normal life there. Yeah. But did you convince? I know you're based out of Spain now. We're in Barcelona. Yeah. You said is it. Did you convince Cam to move to Barcelona, or was he? There? No, 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 no. Cam doesn't live. No, Cam uh, was living in London and in Monaco now. And then before we spent a lot of time in Texas, we we never really had a like a official base. We were always okay. the first couple of years we were in Texas. Then he moved to London, spending a lot, some time there. It's not like he spent a lot of time because he plays so much. And and then we'll do the preseasons in IMG in the States. Then we did some in Spain, but not in Barcelona. So it's so like we were both kind of moving a lot, uh, but yeah, no, no, I never offered him to come live in Barcelona. I, he, he, oh, oh, for some reason, I thought Cam was a bit based out of. No, 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 no. He he that. moved places way too many times. I'm not gonna do that to him again. Uh, and tell me, I'm not sure if you have a partner or not, girlfriend or whatever. Is it impossible to to have one on the road? No, it's not impossible, but um, it just it's up to. It comes with a, a lot, a lot of sacrifices as well for both. But yeah, there, there's a lot of coaches that are married, and they can do it. And a lot of players that are married, and it's like it's like any other job. Like people travel a lot, you just have to find a way to to make it work. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely not easy. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. You need somebody very understanding. Yeah. Uh, and as a coach, as I say, I think I was saying this earlier that I had an interview with a coach yesterday, Dave O'Hare, and I wanted to bring this up. I forgot, but sometimes, how do you guys, obviously the, the player Cam is fit as hell. Uh, I want to bring that up as well. But how do you as a coach keep healthy and fit? Uh, it's not, not tough at all. I mean, you, you go to the tournaments, you have the best gyms in the world, the best locker rooms. And if you're a little hurt, there's pieces that can help you. Uh, there's definitely time. You just, obviously, there's no. It's not a routine. You don't know when you're gonna have free time during the day, but you can wake up early and get it done, or at the end of the day. But you're not really nice hotels, really nice clubs, and there's everything is there to for you to do it. It's just there's no excuses there to stay fit. Really nice hotels and the nice terms and nice good food. food. Yeah. yeah, the tough part sometimes is the good. The food is that good, and you have that many options that it's tough to make good uh, choices. But yeah. You, this is no, it's no excuses to say to not to take fit. I think if you're if your player's making good choices, that will help you make good choices. Yeah, I know. And the the coach should be helping the player make good choices by making good choices. And uh, speaking of uh, fitness, and uh, there was the article in the paper a while ago where we talked. It was brought up in the match as well, where Cam Norrie's harpy he trains for like five, six, seven minutes to two hundred beats per minute, which is pretty crazy. Like. That would put people into car a lot of people into cardiac arrest, uh, those sort of figures. But is he just a is he just a physical beast? Yeah, yeah he always had that. Uh, growing up, he used to do a lot of long distance running with his mom, so he always had an unbelievable engine, and and yeah, th that thing with the with the heart rate was during like two years ago during uh, when they played those battle of the bricks and they were using the catapult devices and. It was showing that he stayed in that red zone for like six or seven minutes. And uh, yeah, it's something that he always had. He still work on it a little bit, but not that much because naturally he has an unbelievable engine. And yeah, when you can do that, then you can improve the rest and, and take people to us to the, to the trenches. Yeah, I, nobody wants to go to the trenches with him because the guy doesn't <laughs> stop. What's the hardest drill you do in practice, the one that... If you want to put pain into Cam's lungs and legs, what's the killer? Drink? Just uh, yeah, a lot of movement. Not nothing too complicated. Very simple. It's just a lot of repetitions, two on ones or one on ones, and um, yeah, we do we do a lot of fin fitness and tennis combined on court. We try to do it once a week, 
and uh, yeah, where there's like a lot of cardio and the uh, during the rest he's he's trying to execute and, and hit shots when he when he's tired, and uh, yeah, that that one th those are tough. Like, so basically, tennis and fitness combine, and there's a lot of suffering there. And do you do you ever hit him? No, no, I'm just feeding the boss. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. Yeah. My, you, you won't take my, him my heart rate stays the no? same there. No, no. Yeah, I, I thought you might take him in the outside <laughs> break. <laughs> no, not anymore. Before we used to play a lot of baseline games and <laughs> some slice games, and it was pretty even. But the last two or three years, it's just no, 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 not even close anymore. You don't bother. I love it. And so, what is the plan? Uh, what's the plan there? We're just after Wimbledon. You're on your little few day vacation. What's the plan? So. We're gonna be training in in uh, Monte Carlo for like two weeks. We, there's a lot of players there, so we're gonna go do a training block there, and then we go straight to Los Cabos, Montreal, Cincinnati. We take a week off, and then U.S. Open. So that, that's kind of the plan for the next couple of weeks. And uh, so the pl the plan is win the U.S. Yeah, I think that's everyone's plan. Yeah. All, all one, yeah. 120 well, players that are playing are gonna try to win it, but. Well, that's and it, it must be crazy, like, how the goals have changed over the years. Like, uh, when you started working with Cam, what was the was the initial goal? Like, let's get to top hundred as quick. No, as we possible. we we never set goals like that. To be honest, never we never had ranking goals. We was always, what do we need to do better to improve and to win more matches? And then, if we take care of those things, I think your your ranking or your your turn the tournaments are gonna come and the ranking is gonna go up. We let that take care of itself, but. We always go by like basically tennis goals, like what 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 do you need to do better, what what level you need to be playing, or your focus or your fitness, and kind of attack those things, and and then let the let the wins uh, take you there. But we never had ranking goals. Was it was it last year where Cam played Schwartzman early on in the U.S. Open? About two years ago, yeah, years the ago. year. That was, what were you like in the? That was an epic five setter, wasn't it? That yeah, was yeah, that, that was a crazy match. Though. That was, wasn't even that fun. They were both playing pretty bad. They were very nervous. Uh, looked like Diego was gonna win that easy, and then come turning around, and then the set again. Diego had it, but uh, yeah, it was it was a roller coaster that match. But uh, yeah, that's why I love the five sets. Um, you have time to to come back. And what's been for you the most exciting match that you've been on the sideline, or maybe the the proudest match for Cam to win for you as a coach? Mm, well, obviously the the Indian Wells title was is huge. The way he handled that situation and that, that match. Um, then the other day with Gofan as well, that match was was crazy because Gofan looked the better player for the most yeah. for the most part. But then Cam obviously played better the big points and ended up. Getting a huge win for his career, um, yeah. Just I don't know. I like obviously when he gets through those finals playing good tennis, like in Delray or Lyon. Those were also really, really proud moments because playing playing your best tennis in those matches is is it's not easy to do. And then when when he gets to those big matches and can produce his best level, it's, it's uh, obviously the nicest thing to see for a coach. You seem to like the grind matches, the one where he just finds a way and, and figures it out and eventually exactly, yeah. Line. And for this last match, I'll talk about the Djokovic match at Wimbledon. What would you do differently if you had the opportunity again? To well, I think I, I think on that match, uh, Cam was doing everything right, everything would we were planning, and no, Novak looked really uncomfortable at the beginning. And then I think Cam dropped his focus for one game, played one loose game that changed the whole match. I uh, felt like the momentum shifted way too quick for the way things were going. And then I felt like uh, if something tactically should have done better, maybe finishing points a little bit more more determined there and more a little bit more more committed. I felt like he started doubting there and Novak started making him play a few more shots per point and then um yeah that was that was kind of the the difference that the thing that changed the match around then Novak played unbelievable stuff really well and then it kind of the match went away too quick that end of the second and beginning of the third but but i thought it was a lot of huge learning experience i mean for camera for me and from the whole team 
but it was also it was also nice to see that he compared to last time he played Nova he was he was way closer and did a lot of things right. Mm. Uh, what's it like for the players going out there playing Novak? Who you know he two sets down he's only getting started. Like you still think Novak people he's still going to win. Like it must be so tough for for all the guys. Yeah, it is tough, but yeah, when, I guess Novak earned it through the years, you know, doing that over and over again, and I think that's that, that's good though because he's gonna force players to become uh, smarter, work harder, figure out ways to to beat him, and obviously, he players have done it on, in the past, so it's not impossible. It's just it's just tougher, but I think that it's motivating knowing that you have guys like this, and if you want to win slams, you're gonna have to beat them in those matches, and that's. I think that's that's really really fun. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Between him, right, between uh, Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal, they have helped raise everybody else's game. Exactly, and and, and, and if you want to win a slam, you probably want to do it beating one of them. So it's it's it's, it's good that they're still around and playing like that. I'd say there's no better feeling for the other guys to beat them. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. But I'm going to this with one question for Kondo. Uh, what's your advice for players out there who are on their journey to want to be a top 100 player what have you learned from your years working with cam that could make a big difference to these players well like we said before just put tennis ahead of everything else know that there's going to be no balance in your life for 10 15 years attack the job every single day and the other advice i would try to give them would be try to put a good team around you invest in yourself invest in a good team and try to do things uh, the most professional way you can. Oh, I know it's not easy, but I feel like the more you invest and the more attention to detail and the more the better people around you have, the better chance you can have to make it. Wise words, wise words. Thank you very much. Uh, best of luck in the in the in the we could say the U.S. swing. And yeah, we thank you, Fabio. Appreciate it, man.